Impy presents. Welcome to a fantastic journey into the past. You're going to meet some of your great, great, great grandparents. Most of them lived many millions of years ago and look totally different from you. You probably never think of them as being part of your family. But it's to them that you owe your life. Because if they had never existed, you wouldn't exist either. Have you ever seen your family tree? In a family tree, the youngest children, you and your brothers and sisters, if you have any, are right at the top. Below that, you'll find your parents, who are the children of your grandparents. And your grandmas and grandpas are the children of your great-grandparents. Do you know your great-grandparents? It's quite possible that they're no longer alive, but one thing is certain. Without them, neither your grandmas and grandpas nor your parents would have been born. And you wouldn't be alive either. Perhaps you're wondering what your family tree has to do with a journey into the past. Imagine this. Your mother holds hands with her mother, your grandma. And your grandma holds hands with her mother, your great-grandma. Your great-grandma does the same with her mother, your great-great-grandma, and so on. This forms a human chain made up of your female ancestors. Of course, it's impossible in reality, but I'll bet you can imagine it. If you walk down the chain of your ancestors, each step takes you further back into the past. If you walk 10 metres, that's 33 feet, you'll be standing in front of your great, 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 great grandma who lived 200 years ago. Hello. If you walk 100 metres along the chain of your great grandmothers, you'll come to your Roman grandma. We call her that because she lived 2,000 years ago during the Roman Empire. Was she a rich Roman aristocrat with a fancy villa and swimming pool? Perhaps. But maybe she was just a poor slave who had to serve her mistress the whole day long. Perhaps she lived outside the Roman Empire in a small village somewhere else. Or maybe in an Indian settlement in America. What did your great, great, great grandmother we need 99 greats here, do? We don't know. But one thing is certain. She gave birth to at least one daughter, who later also became a mother, grandmother and great-grandmother. Or else I wouldn't exist. Exactly. You've walked 100 metres along your great-grandmothers, but you can walk even further, can't you? If you walk one kilometre, that's just over half a mile, you need about 10 or 15 minutes to do that on foot. You come to your Stone Age grandma, who lived 20,000 years ago. It was freezing back then. It was the coldest part of the last ice age, so people had to wrap themselves in thick furs. Your Stone Age grandma lived under completely different conditions than you. But just imagine, if she was born today, she'd look no different from anyone else. We'll take a taxi now because it's faster and we'll drive past your great-grandmothers. After five minutes, when we've driven 10 kilometers or six miles, we'll pull up for a moment and take a look at the very first grandma who belonged to the same species of humans as you do, Homo sapiens. Ah, Grandma Sapiens the first. She lived around 200,000 years ago in Africa. Hi, 
Hang on. Which one is Grandma Sapiens the first? This one here? Or this one? Well, how did she differ from her mother, grandmother and great-grandmother, who weren't yet Homo sapiens women, but belonged to the previous human species, Homo erectus? They all look alike. I can't see any difference. That's right. And there's a reason for that. Because the transitions between species are gradual. That's why we can't tell exactly which of your great-grandmothers was the last Homo erectus grandma and which was the first Homo sapiens grandma. The differences between the human species only become clear if we let our time taxi take us back further into the past. After 90 kilometers, that's 56 miles, we see one of your early erectus grandmas, who lived 1.8 million years ago. You can clearly see that her eyebrows bulged out more, and she had a smaller skull and a barrel-shaped body. This grandma looks pretty strange to me. But that's nothing compared to the strange grandmas you're going to see in a moment. As the taxi drives further, you can tell just by looking out of the window that the arms of your great-grandmothers are getting longer and longer. And they get much hairier too. Soon you'll see your first grandmas that had real fur. After about 200 kilometers, we've been driving for two hours now, we decide to pull up again for a while. This is a Grandma Australopithecus, who lived almost four million years ago. Oops, she almost looks like a chimpanzee. Grandma Australopithecus really doesn't give you the feeling that she's human. But from here to the ancestor of the chimpanzees is about an hour's drive further along the line of our great, 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 great grandmas. After about three hours of driving, we come to Grandma Chimpman, who lived six million years ago in Africa. We call her that because she was the great grandmother of chimpanzees, chimp, and humans, man. So humans and chimpanzees had the same great grandma? Yes, and before that, we had the same mothers and fathers, grandmas and grandpas for billions of years. Only since Grandma Chimpman have we gone separate ways. Even if we had a picture from back then, we wouldn't know which of Grandma Chimpman's daughters led to us and which to the chimpanzees. The chain of ancestors running from your mother to Grandma Chimpman is about 300 kilometers. That's 186 miles long. That's roughly the distance from Berlin to Hamburg. If you're good at walking, you could easily walk that distance in a week. And it would take you one more week to walk back down the chain of the great-grandmothers of today's chimpanzee. So as humans, nothing separates us from chimps. Except for a chain of related great-grandmas, running from Berlin to Hamburg and all the way back again to Berlin. It's not much, is it? Mm -mm. If we drive along our great-grandma chain for another 50 kilometers, we come to Grandma Gori Chimpman the common grandmother of humans, chimpanzees and... Gorillas! Right! She lived seven million years ago. After 550 kilometers, we've gone back 11 million years into the past, where we meet Grandma Angilla Chimpman. This is the common grandmother of humans, chimpanzees, gorillas and orangutans. Exactly! And if you want to get to the delicate little lady that all dry-nosed primates are descended from, we'd need to drive a lot further. The common grandma of all higher primates? All dry-nosed primates. That means all the great apes, including humans, as well as gibbons, baboons, macaques, capuchin monkeys and tarsiers. They're really cute. Grandma Drynose lived about 60 million years ago. Do you want to meet her? 
If we keep to our old scale, where five meters along the chain of our ancestors equals 100 years, then you'd need to go 3,000 kilometers, which would take two days by car and two months on foot. The next stop on our journey into the past won't be until we've reached 10,000 kilometers, over 6,200 miles. That's like flying from Europe to Brazil. That takes us back 200 million years ago. In those days, there lived an insignificant little animal that looked a bit like a modern shrew. It's hard to believe, but it's true. From that little grandma shrew are descended all mammals alive on the earth today. She was the great grandmother of all hedgehogs, rabbits, mice, cats, dogs, horses, pigs, elephants, and monkeys. And of us humans too. Of course. And of all the whales? Yes, of all mammals that have ever lived on this earth. But 200 million years ago, you would hardly have predicted that, because back then, quite different animals were running the show. The first dinosaurs, who later developed into gigantic monsters. My little great-grandmas and great-grandpas were good at hiding from them, I bet. Yes, definitely. If none of them had survived, you wouldn't exist. Ha! They didn't get us. But, I wonder, am I related to the dinosaurs too? Of course. We just have to follow the chain of your great-grandmothers a bit further. To your lizard grandma, who lived 320 million years ago. On the line of relatives, she's 16,000 kilometers. That's 10,000 miles away from you and your mum. About as far as a flight from Europe to Australia. The descendants of your reptile grandma soon split into two groups. One group developed via Grandma Shrew into the mammals. The other line of relatives produced animals like tortoises, snakes, crocodiles, dinosaurs and birds. So T-Rex is an uncle of mine as well. I wish I call great-grandmas and also great-grandpas. Yes, for millions of years you had common ancestors. In fact, you're more closely related to T-Rex than you are to a frog. But even with amphibians like frogs, toads and salamanders, you have common ancestors. Your grandma amphibia lived about 400 million years ago. To reach her along the chain of ancestors, you'd have to travel 20,000 kilometers, which is halfway around the world. This grandma was a real pioneer because she was one of the first vertebrates that crawled out of the water and colonized the land. She probably did what many amphibians do today. She started out as a larva, living like a fish in water. And then she turned into a land animal and used a lung to breathe with instead of gills. Grandma Amphibia lived in two different habitats. The world of aquatic animals and the world of land animals. I suppose you can already guess what animals Grandma Amphibia is descended from. Sure, fish. Right. For 70 million years, our great-grandmothers swam through the oceans as fish. If you went along the chain of ancestors, you'd see nothing but fish for over 3,500 kilometers. Your first grandma fishmouth lived 470 million years ago. Grandma fishmouth? Before that, your grannies were invertebrate animals like sponges or ringed worms. Grandma spongehead? Presumably, Grandma spongehead, 600 million years ago, was the mother of all animals that exist today. 
not just fish, amphibians, reptiles and mammals, but also snails, worms, spiders, insects and crabs. So in your extended family, your big family, there are... A whole lot of creepy crawlies! Our visit to Grandma's sponge head has taken us back to a time about 600 million years ago. That means we followed the line of your ancestors for about 30,000 kilometers. That's 19,000 miles. So, is that the end of our journey? No, most of your ancestors are still missing. But they were so tiny that you would only be able to observe them with a microscope. They were made up of just one single cell and were neither male nor female. Because they were neither grandmas nor grandpas, we're going to call them grandmapas. Grandmapa? Yes, grandmapa bacteria. So I am related to bacteria as well? Yes, but only very, very distantly. The very first grandmapa bacteria arose more than 3,500 million years ago. To get to her, you'd have to travel 175,000 kilometers, that's 110,000 miles, which is like flying right around the world more than four times. From her are descended all bacteria, all plants, all fungi, and all animals that ever lived. All life forms that live on Earth have developed out of her offspring. That sounds like a miracle, but it isn't. We call it... Evolution! Evolution.